that's great. Right, can you go sit down now? Because you're knocking over stuff and you're knocking over the camera. Can you, can you go sit down? That's my phone. Yeah, okay, right. I'll be back in a minute. Hey everyone, Fish Shop Matt here. So tons of you have been asking about the treatments we use in store. Obviously you've seen the systems being fluorescent green, fluorescent yellow, all these different wonderful colours. Uh, most of the treatments we use are big commercial bottles of treatment. They're sort of industrial strength, I guess you would say, or industrial use. So they can be quite tricky for you to use in the home. But most decent brand treatments actually consist of the same treatments. They're, they're the same elements, same chemicals, but they're just made in a, I guess, more user-friendly format for you guys and for me to use at home. The majority of the time that you see the systems in the store being green or yellow or any of those, it's generally when we've got a fish delivery. So we've had a late night fish delivery, we've all been there till nine, ten o'clock at night, and we're using it as a preventative measure. So it's sort of just in case anything comes in, it's easier to treat it on the scale we're working on, it's easier to treat it before any problems happen than waiting for something to show its head and then trying to react to it. So we use it generally as a preventative measure. You can do this at home, it's not normally necessary. If you're buying from a decent place or a decent source that's already quarantined and treated their fish, you shouldn't need to do preventative treating at home. Some people will, it's just a personal preference thing whether you want to or not. So there's loads of brands out there that are, that are selling treatments and things like that. Again, as long as you're sticking to the main brand, you probably won't go too far wrong. The one I like sticking to is from NT Labs. So this is the uh, anti ulcer and Finrot one. I keep a few in stock at home, to be fair. Um, it's really early in the morning. Where was I? Yeah, so the treatments I use is NT Labs. Um, like I say, most good brand products are going to be of a, of a quality that should be good for you, if that makes sense. Um, but NT Labs, I found that they've been doing this for years. They've been making treatments for absolute donkey's years. They have seven main treatments in their range, I suppose you would say, that should cover the majority of issues that you'll run into, or at least most of the illnesses that you'll run into. With all treatments, and I cannot stress this enough, read the instructions again and again and again. It's no good just going home and going, yeah, that much, pour that in, and hoping for the best. Good job that lid's on. Um, and hoping for the best. It could cause you major issues. You know, these, are, these treatments are a foreign object, foreign item in the aquarium, so your fish aren't gonna be used to them, and overdosing it could cause you problems. So I can't stress it enough. Read the instructions and be really careful with how many litres it is in your aquarium, and how many mils you should be treating with. With all, well, most of the aquarium industry's treatments, they are going to turn your water fantastic colours, as I was saying earlier. There's a lot of blues, greens, fluorescent yellows, all of these different colours that your aquarium will turn when treating. Generally, it's nothing to worry about. It's normal, all the medications are fine, and again, as long as you've treated with the right amount, it will dissipate, it will disappear over a few days. There's a few things to think of before you start treating your aquarium. So if you've got any issues, if you see an issue sort of starting to rear its ugly head in your aquarium, there's a few things to do before you get on to pouring these chemicals in. One thing, I suppose the first one to mention, um, is increasing the oxygenation of your aquarium. So air stones, putting your filter nozzle up at the surface, so it rippling the surface, because these chemicals can strip a little bit of oxygen out of the water. The other thing is to do a water change. With any of these treatments, you're probably not gonna be water changing for maybe a week. You know, the treatments do have to stay in the water body. Like, I know there's one of them down here that I'll show you in a bit. You treat on days like one, three, six, and seven, or something like that. So you're not gonna to want to water change in that seven day period. So it's probably worth doing a water change before you start treating. Um, oxygenation, treatment, carbon. So remove any chemical filtration from your filter. So carbons and things like that, they will absorb the treatments out of the water normally. It will, again, read the instructions because some of them don't, but the majority of them you're gonna want to move, remove, gonna want to remove 
any carbons out of your filter just to stop, well, you're, no point in pouring chemicals in and then the carbon taking it straight out, is there? And then lastly, probably one of the most important things in an aquarium, test your water. If your water quality is poor, it's pointless in treating. There's, there's no point. Your fish are going to be living in a poor environment. They're not going to get better. So test your water, make sure that's all all right. Once you've done all of those and everything's coming back good, you've water changed, you've tested, you've removed the carbon, then you should be ready to start treating. Right, so I've probably waffled enough about all the things that you should do before and treatments and blah, 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 blah. So let's get into it. This is the seven treatments that NT Labs do. I don't keep all of them at home, but I keep six out of the seven just in case because I'm a little bit of a worrier. So let's go. Seven treatments quickly, run down because I've waffled enough already. So number one out of my cupboard is anti-ulcer and fin rot. Now this is an antibacterial treatment. Really good for when your fin, oh, not your fins, obviously, but when your fish's fins are starting to sort of wither away and rot away. This is gross. This is going to be a really gross video. Um, but yeah, when they're starting to rot away, or you've got those big open wounds or open sores on the fish. Now, bacteria will get into those and start, for want of a better word, eating your fish. It's gross, but that's the easiest way to describe it. So yeah, you want to get this treatment, and as soon as you see those that fin sort of degrading, those holes in the fish, ulcers, you know, any open sores, this is the treatment you want to get in there. Now the one thing to make sure is that those that damage that you're seeing on your fish isn't because of one of the other fish having a go at them. All that's going to happen is, yeah, great, you're treating it, it's going to stop an infection getting into that damage, but if they're still living with the fish that's kicking off at them, it's not going to get any better. So just keep an eye and make sure there's no bullying going on, you know, and the damage isn't from something going on in the aquarium rather than an actual infection. So the next one, number two out of my cupboard, two... Um, is anti-internal bacteria. So this is, as the name suggests, is another antibacterial treatment that you can use in your aquarium. So with the symptoms of uh, internal bacteria, you can find it's quite varied, like I was saying. So, you know, bulging eyes, pop eyes, scales raising up. Um, what else have you got? Red streaking to the fins, clamped fins. Um, there's a lot of different things that can sort of point towards a problem with an internal bacteria. So as I've said before, and I can't stress enough, these symptoms can be a sign of water quality issues and other issues in the aquarium. So make sure you're testing and checking your water before chucking the treatment in. But if you are suffering, not you personally, again, I keep saying you, it's like I'm talking to your fish. Um, if your fish are suffering with Popeye, you know, clamped fins, red streaking in the fins, it might be pointing towards an internal bacterial issue that you want to get sorted quite quickly. So what's next? Uh, do you know what, I'm just looking at my treatments on the floor because I put them on the floor in front of me so that I can see which ones I've got now out of the cupboard. But I've got one that I don't actually keep in stock at home, um, generally because I don't suffer with it. Again, not me. My fish don't generally suffer with it. Um, but that's a swim bladder treatment. Now, swim bladder treatment is essentially another antibacterial treatment and it sorts out bacterial issues issues within the swim bladder of the fish. So all fish have a swim bladder, I'm sure you're aware, and that keeps their buoyancy right in the water so they can control themselves, they can swim around, they can keep themselves buoyant. Sometimes you get a bacterial infection in that swim bladder and that causes them to lose buoyancy, to float, to sink, to just not be able to maintain their straight swimming nature in the water, I suppose. So as I was saying, if your fish isn't maintaining buoyancy, is sort of floating about, then this is the treatment that you're gonna to want to use. Majority of the time, it's fancy goldfish keepers that we sell this treatment for. Fancy goldfish are one of the, the worst fish, I guess, for having swim bladder issues. But the only thing to think about first is swim bladder problems can come from elsewhere. So they can come from incorrect diet um, and sucking in air at the surface. So when the fish are swimming up to the surface and gulping in tons and tons of air from maybe feeding floating foods, that can cause them to have not necessarily a swim bladder issue, but buoyancy problems. So well worth looking out for that. If it's happening just after feeding or quite often after feeding, it might not be an infection. The other thing that it might be is, um, what is the other thing that it might be? I thought about this earlier. The other thing that it might be, buoyancy issue, Swim bladder treatment. I'll get it. 
I'll remember it. <gasps> Growing. So, what it can be sometimes, fancy goldfish, again, looking at fancy goldfish, looking at you guys, fancy goldfish. Um, what it can be is where they grow and fancy goldfish are odd shapes. So I have seen it in fancy goldfish and I have seen it in things like parrot cichlids sometimes where they're a bit of an odd shape. Um, and where they grow, they just get an issue, I guess. They get a twist in the swim bladder, they get a... It doesn't actually sit right within the fish. So, you know, I'm sure you might have seen some of the videos online of people making like buoyancy aids that strap around their goldfish and that makes them float on the surface, or not on the surface, but makes them float upright in the water. So that can just be a deformity or a, a growth issue with your fish that, you know, if it's not getting better with changing the feed or using the treatment, unfortunately, it's probably gonna be an issue that is gonna be ongoing and long-term with your fish. So the next set of treatments in line is um, anti-parasite treatments, essentially. And the next one is anti-parasite. It's called anti-parasite. So this is going to treat things like uh, costia and udinium and trichodina and throwing Harry Potter spells at you now. Um, but this is going to treat all sorts of different parasites that you might come into contact with within your aquarium. So you're going to want to watch out for a few things when looking for parasites or looking to see if your fish are suffering parasites. Generally, the fish will build up a um, sort of slimy coat on them. That's normally like a mucus layer that they're trying to, I guess, almost protect themselves against the parasites. So it's like a shiny film that grow, that's on, on their body. So if they're not looking their full colour or something and they've got this mucus layer, that might be a sign of parasites. The other thing, it can be gasping up at the surface. It means that they're having problems with a parasite infection, possibly in their gills. Again, for the what feels like the tenth time we've already saying, Test your water first. Mucus layers and um, gasping at the surface can all be signs of poor water quality. So before dumping in anti-parasite treatment, make sure that your water quality is testing up good. Because yeah, these signs all point to water quality and parasite issues. But yeah, if you are getting that, if you've tested up, everything's fine, but your fish are still a little bit slimy, gasping at the surface, not looking great, if you've tried water quality, you've put more oxygen into the water, then yeah, really you're going to want to go for this anti-parasite treatment. I forgot, I've got it down here. This one. Oh, with the last one, this one, anti-parasite, it can kill off snails and shrimp. So be careful. There are certain treatments that will tell you that they do kill off because of the chemicals that they include. It's probably copper. It is copper. Because of the copper that they include in the uh, in that treatment, it will kill off snails and shrimp, so be careful of that. That leads me into the next treatment, anti-fluke and wormer. Again, same thing. This isn't copper-based. Um, this is a product called Flubendazole. Flubendazole. I think it's Flubendazole. Um, but anyway, it's, a, it's like a worming treatment, essentially. It can kill off shrimps and snails. So again, if you've got shrimps and snails in your aquarium and you want to keep them safe, get them out before pouring this in. Um, with Fluke and Wormer, these are gonna be a little bit more visible. Um, so you'll find that flukes are generally on the body of the fish. Again, if you're buying your fish from a reputable source, I would hope that they had seen them before they had sold them to you. Um, but yeah, you might find that you've got a few flukes. They can hide, they can get in the gills. It can be tricky to spot. So yeah, generally with this, you will see the parasite. You will see it, it's a lot larger. The other thing that this can treat or that you can watch out for is your fish going skinny and still eating. If they're still eating and, sorry, my dog's just come to join me. Um, don't knock over the camera. As you probably saw at the start or somewhere I possibly left it in, my dog has just rudely interrupted me and is now trying to lick my leg and trying to be a pain. So um, I don't know where I was on this, but I think I was at the point where I was saying about skinniness. So let's try again one more time with feeling. Um, if your fish are still eating, they're taking in a lot of food, but they're not getting or not putting on weight and they're looking skinny, this might be one for you because certain fish, things like discus, you know, they can suffer from internal or intestinal worms and they can sometimes take over. So the fish is constantly eating, but no food is getting, or no food is being used by them and it's being used by other things living inside them. So yeah, this would be one for that. So look out for skinniness and look out for things living on the outside of your fish. So it's okay. There's only two more to go. You're nearly, you're nearly a fully qualified fish pharmacist. Um, I've had to have 
Roma come and sit on my lap because um, she won't leave the camera alone and won't leave the treatments alone and keeps trying to bite things and just play because she's now woken up. So I'm going to have her on the, my lap probably for the last of the video. But here we go. Last two treatments. Let's go. Second to last treatment is Disease Solve. Now, Disease Solve is a bit of a sort of do-it-all treatment, I guess you would say. It, um, it helps with the background levels of pathogens and things like that in your treat in your tank. I don't actually... Oh yeah, so it's yeah. So it's two main medications that are present in a lot of the other treatments, to be fair. The, the two chemicals that are included in this one are actually included in a lot of the others. But what it does is, or what you want to be looking for, I suppose I should say, is, um, is fish flicking. Um, ah, Roma, you are just, thanks. So, what you want to be looking out for is fish flicking or rubbing themselves on things, being lethargic, having clamped fins. Essentially, these pathogens are going to be present in your aquarium, you know, most of the time. The only time that they become a problem is when your fish are stressed or it's sort of a little bit under the weather. Um, and then those pathogens can take over and can get higher numbers or get in higher numbers in your aquarium. So once you see that, once you see the flicking, rubbing, this might be the treatment for you. Again, for the... 500th time, it can all be signs of water quality issues. Let's say it together, water quality issues, Roma, you're a pain. So it can be signs of water quality issues. Um, again, make sure you test your water, make sure everything's good. If everything is good, then it is probably something to do with sort of background levels of pathogens or problems in your aquarium. And it's well worth putting a treatment in there to try and cure it. So you'll be happy to hear that you have made it to the final boss, the final treatment. And it's probably the most popular one that we sell. And that is anti-white spot and fungus. This is probably the two main problems that a lot of our... <laughs> These are the two main problems that a lot of our customers will encounter in their fish keeping career. So the two things you're gonna want to watch out for in this is well, for funguses, you're going to be wanting to watch out for white, fluffy growths on the fish. Now, these can pretty much come anywhere that the fish has got damaged or has hurt himself, herself, itself. Um, so it can come anywhere where the fish has damaged itself and it ends up getting an infection, a fungal infection. So watch out for those white, cotton woolly, fluffy like growths on your fish. When it comes to white spot, what you're going to be looking for is salt or sugar grain size yeah, salt grain size spots all over your fish. Now, a lot of people confuse white spot with um, tubercles that fish get when they're breeding. So things like goldfish and barbs and certain other fish in the industry, they can get these things called tubercles. When the males start to breed or get into breeding coloration, they get white spots on their gill plates, that's their cheeks, but on their gill plates and on the leading edge of their fins. Um, I'll try and find a photo to put up. I'm sure I've got a photo somewhere of it. Um, but yeah, don't confuse that. If it is just on their gill plates and it's on the front of the pectoral fins, it's probably not a parasite. It's probably breeding tubercles. Um, and really, you don't need to worry about that. That will go in time once all the fish calm down and they've done what they need to do. Last one. This is the last bit. You just need to be quiet for one more bit. Okay? Don't go running off after the bin men. So, white spot. Um, it starts off as a singular parasite. It's probably one of the most prolific parasites that you can get in the aquarium and it spreads really, really rapidly. It will live on your fish. It will be, like I say, a salt grain sized lump on your fish. It will drop off the fish into your gravel, do some stuff, reproduce and come back out a hundred or more parasites looking for a new host. Once they find the host, the whole process repeats. So you can go from nothing to a lot within a very, very short period of time. So white spot you want to get on top of very, very quickly. Now, some people and some treatments will tell you to turn up the temperature of your aquarium. What this does is uh, speeds up the life cycle of the parasite sometimes um, and causes the parasite to drop off quicker. In that space, you should be able to then kill it quicker. Personally, it's always a bit of a risk to um, turn the temperature up at this time because your fish are already stressed and then you're putting another chemical in on top which could reduce the oxygen. So I'd always be careful with turning the temperature up. Sometimes it is just better to leave where it is and let the treatment sort of cycle through. 
So last bit is fungus. Now, with funguses, that's, that's brilliant. So with funguses, what you find is that funguses only infect generally fish that have got damage to them or, you know, something where the fungus can take hold. It can happen other ways, but more often than not, it's a piece of, it's a bit of damage or a scale missing or something, and then the fungus gets in. So if you see that white cotton woolly growth, it shouldn't spread to your other fish unless all the other fish have got problems. So in theory, get the treatment in there and it should clear the fungus up relatively quickly. If you've got here, you should be able to diagnose the good majority of issues that you'll ever encounter in an aquarium from parasites to funguses to bacteria. In theory now, you should be good and you should be uh, able to diagnose any of those. As always, I've been your host, Fish Shop Matt. This has been Roma. She's a pain in the backside. I'm going to take this one out for a walk because she's really playful um, and won't settle down. So uh, until next time.